there's no clear line. There are plenty of obese people, who, you know, who would be defined as obese, who are healthy, and people who have normal BMI who are unhealthy. Hi, I'm Paul Dietrich with Reason TV. Today we're talking with Abigail Segui. Segui is an associate professor of sociology and gender studies at UCLA and has written the book, What's Wrong with Fat? Abigail, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Okay, I think I can answer the question of your book, What's Wrong with Fat? It's unhealthy, right? That is what most people assume. And in fact, the idea that fatness is a medical problem, a public health crisis, is taken for granted by most of your viewers. Most people watching would assume that, of course, fat is a problem because it's unhealthy. In fact, it's not just a problem for an individual person, but it's a public health crisis. Most of the books that are published on this topic will say, how have we gotten ourselves into this predicament? Why are we so fat? Why are we getting fatter? What can we do about it? And this book actually turns those questions on their head and asks, how have we come to think about fatness as a medical problem and public health crisis. Now, I watch the news all the time and they tell me about this obesity epidemic that's it's the number one killer. Is it the number one killer? Is it really? So I'm not going to say that there is no health risks associated with having a BMI over 30, which is the current definition of obesity. BMI is body mass index. And it's BMI, what we use to measure obesity, is simply a measure of weight controlling for height. I'm not going to say there's no health risks. There are some health risks. The most, uh, the clearest example is type 2 diabetes, in which we see that there is a clear association as you get heavier, as BMI increases, your risk of having type 2 diabetes increases. Even that, however, is an association. We don't know what the causal mechanism is between higher body mass and diabetes. It may be that being heavier actually causes diabetes, but it could be that diabetes causes weight gain. Or there could be some third factor, nutrition, physical activity, even stress, that's causing both obesity and diabetes. So there's a difference between being overweight and being unhealthy. When we talk about an obesity epidemic, we assume that moving from non-obese to obese is like moving, is akin to moving from health to illness. Right? I mean, if we, it was a tuberculosis epidemic, certainly, we're counting the number of people who have tuberculosis, that's, they're clearly ill. But with obesity, that's not, there's no clear line. There are plenty of obese people, who, you know, who would be defined as obese, who are healthy, and people who have normal BMI who are unhealthy. How does the media frame our opinions about fat? So I've done an extensive analysis of news media reporting and have found several things. First, I found, not surprisingly, that the news media is more attracted when reporting on scientific studies to those studies that are dramatic. Headlines such as obesity and overweight is soon to take tobacco as a leading cause of preventable death is more appealing and more likely to make uh, front page news. It's scary. It's scary, yeah. And it, it grabs people's attention. And those types of studies are more likely to get news media coverage than studies that are less, less dramatic. In 2004, a study was published that estimated that there were 400 excess deaths in the year 2000 because people were overweight or obese. That study got a ton of news media attention, and the headlines were exactly this, soon to overtake tobacco as the leading cause of preventable death, assuming that this is a choice that people weigh more. Another study was published the following year that revised that figure down to 26,000, less than 26,000. It seems it's like more about the headline than it is about the, what the study said. It was about the headline, and it was also a message we're eating ourselves to death, fat is bad, that is taken for granted. That didn't raise skepticism. When it comes to politicians, we have the mayor of New York City outlawing big gulp sodas and salt, San Francisco outlawed Happy Meals. Where do politicians get fat wrong? So where I think governments and cities err is linking issues of nutrition 
and in some cases physical activity. We see this with Michelle Obama and her Let's Move campaign, linking these issues that may have some merits on their own rights to obesity. I think it's a problem for two reasons. First of all, by Talking about fat bodies is a problem, and we see this with billboards. We, we, recently, there was a um, Wake Up Georgia campaign in which they showed photos of fat children looking absolutely depressed and despairing into the camera, and they suggested that this was our problem, that our children are fat. What, is this, what effect does this have on a kid? You know, if they're themselves fat and they look at this, it reinforces the idea that they already have, that they're already being told, believe me, by the kids in their class that there's something wrong with them. Here they're being told by adults, adults in positions of authority, that their bodies are not okay. Is this going to have a positive effect on them? Is this going to make them take better care of themselves? And probably not. So if I'm walking around in New York City and I can't get a big gulp soda, is that an overreach? What do you think? My Concern is not so much whether it's an overreach or not. My concern is that it gets linked with obesity, that it's only perceived as a problem because it's making people fatter. I think that that's misrepresenting the issue. I think it's dishonest. The problem is if we can't link it to obesity, people don't care so much. And that's the problem that the advocates are faced with. If for many years before we had this obesity epidemic, there were people who were concerned about nutrition but people weren't paying attention. They couldn't get people's attention. But because we're all so obsessed about weight, linking issues of nutrition to we're gonna get fat, our children are going to get fat, that draws people's attention and that's why it's being done. I think it misrepresents the issue, it reinforces weight-based discrimination and it's, it's a very, it comes with very serious social costs.